Welcome back, everybody, to another episode here of Higurashi When They Cry Ho, Chapter 1, Onikakushi Hen. Dolan here, and we're going to get right into things. But first, last time on Higurashi, we won a stuffed bear for Rena, and then she gave us, like, a glomp and a smooch, I guess. And now we're going to see Rika's, like, performance over at the, sh at the, at the altar. Um... Anyway, that's about it. Now that we're caught up, let's jump right in. There was already a huge group of people gathered at the altar in front of the shrine. The fire at the altar made it as bright as midday and just as hot. There was a pile of futons warded with sanctified rope in front of the altar. Come to think of it, they did say it was a festival where they did something with cotton and futons. Keiichi-san, Rana-san, we're over here. Satsuko waved her hand from the front row. Ah, sorry, sorry! Making our way through the mass of people, we reached the spot where they'd saved. How was it? Were you able to have a little bit more excitement with Rena? Y y you punk! <laughs> so that's what your plan was. Instead of replying, Mion gave us a perverse grin. How was it, Rena? Was Keichan's hand bigger than you thought it'd be? Rena turned bright red, puffs of steam shooting out from her. I heard something slice through the air and turn around to see Mion on the ground with a welt on her face. Wow. <laughs> no playing around right now. <laughs> no more no more fooling around. Mion, when were you hit? Be between the ha and the uh of her ha, I think. Rena. It's not good to punch your friends to hide your embarrassment. I, I didn't hit her. Wh whatever. <laughs> Thump. The thunderous beat of the drum echoed, silencing the crowd. <laughs> Something like that. You must all be quiet. It's beginning. It was a solemn ritual. Rikachan entered dressed as a shrine maiden, followed by the members of the municipal committee. The elders all looked at Rikachan and clasped their hands in praise. The only thing allowed to disturb the profound silence was the flash from Tomotake-san's camera. What's the big thing Rikachan is holding? Oh, that's used for this festival. It's a sacred farming tool that only the Shride Maiden may touch. It was an awkward shape for a piece of farm equipment, not uncommon for something used in rituals. After reciting a Shinto prayer, Rikachan approached the pile of futons gathered at the altar. She swung the hoe skillfully, plowing into the futons. Each and every little movement of this performance probably had to be done in a certain way. Without a doubt, this was a ritual. What's next? Airing out the futons? <laughs> She's purifying the futons, which sacrificially absorbed winter's illnesses for those using them. So when Keichan said airing out the futons, I guess he wasn't completely wrong. Rikachan's face was already dripping with sweat. That hoe was probably really heavy. She staggered side to side with the momentum of each swing. Satoko looked on, silently lending her support. Worried? Rika practiced every single day with a mochi hammer. <laughs> she will certainly prevail. Satoko's hands were sweaty, and whenever Rika-chan started to sway a little, she held her breath. Why wasn't Mion a candidate to be the Shrine Maiden? Feels wrong having Rikachan swing something so heavy. I'd do it if they asked me, you know. Well, it's not something just anyone could do. That's true. Shrine Maidens need to be pure after all. <laughs> Mion drove her elbow into my side. With the thud of the big drum... Rikachan gave a solemn bow and descended from the altar. That triggered a round of generous applause. 
After the Shinto priest had raised up the Konstantans like a portable altar, all the spectators stood up. Following after the priests, we all marched on a mod at a moderate pace. They descended the shrine's giant stairs in a line. What's happening now? Washing the futons in the river? I like this music a lot. It's really... What's the word? Ambient. Ah, <laughs> what's on Agashi means setting cotton adrift, you know? The procession continued right up the bank of the stream. The fire was stoked high, and it was bright as day here, too. It was bright as day here, too. People started crowding around it and clamoring. Alright, get in line. Line up, Keichikun. I wondered what was up. Maybe we'd get some holy wine. Red and white buns? <laughs> ah, it's not food. I said it was cotton. Ah, but of course. They didn't call it the Watanagashi for nothing. I finally understood. The municipal committee members pulled out cotton from inside the futons and balled it up like mochi, handing it out to people. I mean, this has all been explained to you. Why are you only understanding it right now? Rena dove into the line and brought out some for me as well. We then proceeded to the bank of the stream. Since it's your first time, Keichikun, just copy what I do. She held the cotton in her right hand, and waving her hand as if to purify it, she touched it to her forehead, chest, navel, and both thighs. You do this three times and silently give thanks to Oyashiro-sama. Oyashiro-sama? What's that? The name of the shrine's god? Yes, it's the guardian deity of Hinamizawa. It brings about both miracles and curses, so you must be sure to show respect. That sounded like a pretty frightening god. But, well, when in Rome. I was officially a resident of Hinamizawa now, after all. Doing as Rena showed me, I touched the cotton over myself three times. Thank you, Oyashiro-sama. Thank you, Oyashiro-sama. Oyashiro-sama. But he didn't... he didn't thank him on the third one. If that comes back around and that matters, I'm gonna laugh really hard. This way, all the evil that possesses you is sucked out by the cotton. Then you let it gently drift away on the stream and you're done. Together, Rena and I set our pieces of cotton afloat on the surface of the water. The flowers of cotton blooming in the water. It sucked out all the bad illnesses from Hinamizawa and drifted off, disappearing into the distance. It was wonderful, like those floating lantern festivals I've se I had seen on TV. The best part, though, was feeling like this rite of passage had made me a true resident of Hinamizawa. If that comes back around and bites him in the ass because he forgot to say thank you the third time, I'm getting that vibe, and I don't know if it's because that was in the show and I'm remembering it subconsciously, but... Oh, at first I was a bit anxious. Hurting someone was something I never considered. Nonetheless, the anxiety then gave place to loneliness, doubt, and more. And then that wicked murderous intent eventually took control of my mind. The boy took the first step towards an uncoverable daily life. Unrecoverable daily life. Not even realizing he was walking into the abyss. Tragedy born from the desire to believe. Are those tears of rep repentance or tears of resentment? Huh. While staring off into the stream, I somehow got separated from Rena. I wasn't very lonely, though. I know this place now. This is where I live. My home. It's probably better if I just stay here instead of wandering around aimlessly. Someone would surely find me while I was enjoying the evening breeze. I heard a familiar voice. It was Tomotake-san's. I headed towards it. How did it go, Tomotake-san? Were you able to get some good shots? Yeah, fortunately. Tomotaka-san was with a girl. I felt a little like I was intruding. Oh god. 
Like, how was it, Keiichi-kun? Did you enjoy the festival? From the way she spoke, it seemed like she was a resident of Inumisawa. <laughs> Is it because of the voice I chose, or because she's talking about the festival so nonchalantly? I really should try harder to remember people's faces here. What was her name? I mean, I know who it is. You did meet her. She did say something to you off screen a couple episodes back. Well, um, it was fun. My face must have given away how desperately I was trying to remember her name because she gave a lighthearted chuckle. It's probably because it hasn't been long since you moved here. It's pretty hard to believe seeing how friendly you've gotten with the other kids. If that's how it looked, it was probably all thanks to Rena and Mion. Like, perhaps you sh Like, perhaps you feel more like a resident of Himizawa after taking part in the festival today? Hmm, I wonder about that. Oh, that's not like you. I tried to get used to Himizawa, but there were still plenty of things I didn't know. The faces of people I'd met, for example. Things that had happened in the past as well. Oh. Wait, was he saying all that out loud? Why does it... That's so weird. It implies that they can hear what he's saying and, like, to... Whatever. Oh, you're feeling left out because of something like that. It's not so much as feeling left out, it's just... I'm not sure how to say it. That incident at the dam construction site, the fighting over it and the other conflicts. A terrible incident they pretended they didn't even know about whenever I brought it up. Even though it was in the past, as someone living in Inamazawa, it wasn't wrong to want to know about both the good and bad that happened here. See, like, there's quotes here, and then it ends, and then this appears with no quotes, and it makes me think, oh, he's just, like, speaking, he's like the narrator. He's just, you know, this is monologue. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't, and it's really confusing. If it will put you at ease, then I'll tell you everything I know. So Matake-san's smile made me more relieved than I'd ever been. It was hard to think of what to ask when someone said, ask me anything, though. Even when there was so much I wanted to ask. Then, could you tell me about what happened when the dam was being constructed? There was a big incident where Hinamizawa was going to be submerged, right? I think the locals would be more knowledgeable about the dam than I am. Well, if you don't mind, I'll tell you what I know. It's only what I read in the newspaper, though. Tomotake-san's eyes entered an unfocused gaze as he searched through his memory. Then he spoke. The decision to start the dam project was finalized seven or eight years ago. I heard it was the next largest project after the one in Karobe. There were three major issues in Japan at the time. Improving inter island transportation, infrastructure, meeting the higher demand for electricity, and flood control. There was a boom of dam building due to the massive economic stimulus they provided on top of generating electricity and flood control. Hinamizawa had the right conditions to support dam construction, so it was singled out. The dam reservoir would have covered quite a lot of ground when it was completed. The entire area, right up to Yagochi, way upstream, would be underwater. But, why did they have to pick a populated area like Hinamizawa? Couldn't they have instead picked a place where nobody lived? Hmm, I'm not really sure why, but I heard that it was just the right terrain for building a dam. Of course, there are protests in here in Hinamizawa. Rika-chan had said that they fought. From that choice of words, I had to guess things had turned violent. There was, a, there was a trial, and it was even brought up before the National Diet. 
It was covered in Tokyo in the newspapers, too. Meon had told me about that as well. I'm sure every resident of Hinamizawa had united to fight together. The feeling of solidarity found here, which could not be expressed properly with mere words, was likely brought about by that battle. As a result, bribery and scandals were brought to light. As things got more and more complicated, they eventually halted construction. If I wanted to know, now is my only chance. Oh, if I wanted to know, now is my only chance to ask. Certainly, it was certainly a bizarre incident that boys my age would be curious about. I felt a little shame from the fact that I was petty enough to have my curiosity piqued by Rena and Mion's refusal to talk about the event, but I figured I might as well ask since I had the chance. Just so I would stop thinking about it so much. So, there was a dismemberment, right? There was. I happened to be here in Hinamizawa at the time, so I remember it well. Tomotake san's answer was nonchalant in contrast to my hesitantly forced out question. It was about this time, four years ago. It was the day of the Watanagashi, if I recall correctly. Debate on whether to continue construction on the dam was in disarray. Scandal after scandal rocked the project near, near the end. The incident that was the final nail the, the incident that was the final nail on the coffin for the dam project. A fight at the dam construction site ended in the victim being murdered. Fearing prosecution, six, the six assailants divided their remains into six pieces and each hit one. Five of the six criminals turned themselves in out of guilt, but one was still on the run. The Red Army didn't have yet to be found. The major details lined up with what was in the tabloid I'd read earlier. It certainly was a tragic incident, but it wasn't so terrible that Ren and Mio needed to hide it from me. I guess they didn't want someone who just moved here to have a negative impression of Hinamizawa. I felt grateful for having friends who worried so much about me, as well as shame for still being so interested in it. It was near the end of all the trouble at the dam, you see. So everyone was saying that it was Oyashiro-sama's curse. Oyashiro-sama's curse, huh? I literally just two minutes ago read this. Oyashiro-sama was the name of the god at the shrine that held the festival today, if I recall it correctly. I literally learned that, in, like, minutes, minutes ago. I see. Their guardian deity rained divine punishment down on the evil dam construction for trying to flood Hinamizawa. Whoa. Apparently the younger ones didn't think so. But it seems the elderly in the village never doubted that it was Oyashiro-sama's curse. The woman with Tomotake-san chuckled mischievously. Tomotake-san began laughing with her. It was so infectious that I ended up laughing as well. But I wonder about now. There are quite a few, I think. Amongst the youth, too. A few what? People who believe in Oyashiro-sama's curse. The woman's lips were still curled into a smile, but her expression turned stern. Then, after that, it continued every year. Always around this time. Continued? What continued? Tomotake-san paused for a second, as if to build up some suspense. Then he whispered to me, as if someone might have been listening. Every year... On the day of the Watanagashi, somebody dies. <laughs> so dramatic. The year following the dismemberment, on the day of the Watanagashi, a man from Hinamizawa who had supported the dam fell off a cliff overlooking some rapids and died while he was on vacation. Unfortunately for his wife, the body was never recovered. He supported the dam construction even though he lived in Hinamizawa. At the time, 
There were whispers amongst the elderly saying it was Oyashiro-sama's curse. The woman chuckled mischievously again. Then, the next year, the night of the Watanagashi, the shrine's Shinto priest died suddenly of an unknown illness. His wife drowned herself in the bog that night. The shrine's Shinto priest? You mean it was from the shrine here? The woman nodded. There was a rumor again amongst villagers that they weren't able to quell Oishiro-sama's anger. Then, the year after that, Again on the night of the Watanagashi, they discovered the battered body of a local housewife. Housewife? Up until now, all these mysterious deaths were people involved at the dam, or who had connections with Oyashiro-sama. With that in mind, could the housewife have been involved in some way too? Exactly! The woman stated slyly. No, it was more menacingly. The victim's family, you see? happened to be that of the younger brother of the dam supporter who fell into his death two years before. The younger brother is still alive, it seems, but it did bother him quite a bit, so he moved to the neighboring town. For a while, I stood there with my mouth agape. The battle over the dam construction with Hinomizawa's future at stake, and the murder at the center of it all, that was all I knew. And that was all I wanted to ask about. But that wasn't all there was to the story. Homicide, body disposal, accidental deaths, terminal illness, suicide, fatal beatings. I'm a pretty level-headed person. I don't really want to believe in curses, but... The freakish deaths that happened every year on the day of the Watanagashi? And all of them were related to the dam construction. It was easy to just... To dismiss each of them as coincidences by themselves, but when you put them all together, dismissing all of them as coincidence would then defy logic. I don't believe in curses, but every single year on the day of the Watanagashi, somebody or something makes it happen without fail. The woman chuckled again as if she picked up on what I was thinking. Felt like she was saying, Maybe there was. Like, maybe we frightened him. Stuff like that. I felt embarrassed at being read so easily. I pressed Tomotake-san to continue. A bit of impatience and irritation in my tone. Then? So someone died the next year, right? Who was it that time? I wonder. Who do you think, Keichikun? The hell? The way he said it didn't agree with me. His scar the sarcastic tone ticked me off. Don't avoid the question. I'm serious here. Like, hey, hey, calm down. Calm down, Keiichi Kun. I realized when she tried to calm me down that I had been panicking. We aren't trying to avoid the question, Keiichi. It's just, when you say the next year, that's... That's today. When Tomitake-san hesitated to say it, she finished it for him. I broke into a cold sweat. I really didn't like the direction this was headed. Nobody wants to speak of it, but they all think it's going to happen again tonight. The, the festival was so cheerful, though. Well, the victim last year, the housewife, she was a non-believer. Turns out she didn't even attend the Watanagashi festival. There was a rumor going around that if you didn't participate in the festival, you would incur Oyoshiro-sama's wrath. Didn't you hear anything about this, Keiichi-kun? I never even heard a whisper of that rumor. The, then the reason everyone was at the festival was they were afraid of the curse? I figured that must have been the reason. There were a lot more people at the Watanagashi than usual. I guess everyone was just afraid, after all, of Oishiro-sama's curse. I couldn't under utter a single word. In this modern age, where we've made progress in all scientific fields, shedding light on the unknown and misunderstood, where black and white television has been eradicated and we've sent men to the moon, even with all of these accomplishments, this can still exist in modern society? 
Tons of invitations were sent out to neighboring town's youth groups to help pad the numbers. But after that string of events, few decided to join. The municipal committee members were complaining about how hard it was to gather participants. Also, the police are treating each case as isolated. They don't believe they're connected. But apparently they've sent quite a few plainclothes officers for security. Finally began to dawn on me why Rena and Mion were reluctant to talk. If nothing happened during this with Tanagashi, every, everything would have been over with and I'd be none the wiser. If nothing happened, all would be well. In that case, it would all end up just being crazy talk. I should have pretended like I knew nothing from the beginning. Then they wouldn't have had to act like nothing happened. And we w would have all gotten back to life as usual. Maybe it was just too much for him after all. The woman ran her fingers through her hair as she sighed. N no, it wasn't. Not at all. I tried to act strong, but that just served to emphasize how much the information had unsettled me. After seeing how I looked, Tomotake-san appeared to regret saying anything. Letting out a sigh, he then spoke, forcing an awkward, upbeat demeanor. Keichi-kun, okay, surely you don't believe in such things as curses. Well, no. If the causes of all the crimes were unknown, with the perpetrators and their methods all mysteries, then I'd concede the possibility of a curse. But that's not how things are in reality. Police investigations have already uncovered the truth and perpetrators for all of the cases. Hearing him say police made me feel a lot better. It was, the perfect, it was perfect for repelling the word curse. The first one, the dismemberment, for example. I told you, didn't I? All but one of the perpetrators were arrested. It's only a matter of time before the last one gets caught. The motive turned out to be... to have been an argument they had while intoxicated. That's no curse, don't you agree? That's no curse, don't you agree? That was true. If it didn't happen on the day of the Watanagashi, then I wouldn't think it was related to the curse at all. The accidental deaths of the couple who supported the dam is the same. He was in a position that made others hate him. The police made a point of investigating from that angle. They concluded it was an accident, not foul play. But they both happened on the same day, the day of the festival, right? Haha. <laughs> Just think about it, Keiji-kun. Do you think people with a lot of enemies here in Hinamizawa could participate easily in a local festival? It would be especially hard for them to be around during the Watanagashi. So they probably left Hinamizawa intentionally around this time of year to travel, don't you think? It wasn't a very clear explanation, but I sort of understood what Tomitake-san was getting at. So I pressed on earnestly, asking more questions so that I could convince myself. Then, Tomitake-san, what about the priest who died after that? The one with the unknown illness? That also happened on the day of the festival. It's even easier to explain what happened to the Shinto priest. The Watanagashi is a really big event that happens once a year. It was probably from all the built-up stress. Or it may have been because of a pre-existing condition. But it was an unknown illness. It's hard to believe such a thing could exist with all our advances in medicine. It's just an exaggeration. Rumors making rumors. Anyone would get worked up over having incidents happen two years in a row. The sudden death is quite unnatural, though. Of course, the police ordered an autopsy because of the strange way he died, but there wasn't enough for them to open a full investigation, you know? It turns out it was just a sudden death due to illness. The priest's wife committed suicide, correct? What about that? I believe I already explained that. Everyone was shaken up by the incidents happening for a third year. Those who were of strong faith were quick to believe it was the work of the curse. Of course, that included the priest's wife. Apparently they found a suicide note that said something like, 
My death will quell Oyashiro-sama's anger. Well then, how about the next incident with the housewife? That happened on the day of the Wakan Tanagashi too. The perpetrator has already been caught, and the case has been closed. Turns out that it was just some nutjob trying to continue the legacy of the curse. Then, then how about the incident next year? Oh, uh, oh yeah, this year is next year. Tomotaki-san gave a hearty laugh. Nothing will happen. Not this year. There was never a curse to begin with. It's just that a group of people believed it was the explanation for a string of coincidences. My internal computer finally got its look back on track. I felt a bit embarrassed by how childish I'd become after losing control and panicking. I could see very clearly now that Takeichi Kun really does love Hinamizawa. Even if Oyashiro Sama's curse actually did exist, I can't imagine that Keichi Kun would ever become a target. I felt very relieved. I should probably just forget everything I heard tonight. Margaret ran on Mion tomorrow with the same smile as always. They'd probably also like tonight to end without incident, so I could continue on tomorrow without having worried me. Perhaps seeing my change in attitude, the woman who had been listening in, st listening in stretched as she got up from the rock she was sitting on. Well then, I should be getting back. Goodness, I think I may have gone a bit long too. There were so few people compared to the crowd from before, I could only make out a few groups and families enjoying the cool evening air. I looked at my watch. It seemed we'd been... It seemed we'd talked for the better part of an hour. Didn't you come along with your friends, keiji -kun? Not going to look for them? Oh, yeah. They might all be looking for me. <laughs> You're quite the scoundrel making girls look for you. See you, keiji -kun. Have a nice night. You too, jiro -san. I'll see you a bit later. <laughs> Tomotake-san seems to be quite the scoundrel himself. So his name is Jiro. <laughs> After dusting off her backside, she disappeared into the crowd of people, still busy cleaning up the shrine grounds. Keichi-kun! So sorry. In her place, Reina came running over. I could see all the others behind her. Speak of the devil. My bad, Kei-chan. I got so caught up in our discussion. I completely f <laughs> I mean, I did too, so... I'd completely forgotten about them while caught up in my own conversation, so we were even. My, so Tamatake-san was with you. This works out perfectly. We still need to settle the shooting gallery competition. Ah, th that's all. Ah, th that's right. So I guess I'm gonna end up dead last. In the end, after my dramatic victory, Rika Chun was the last challenger, but there weren't many targets left. The ones remaining were all tiny and difficult to hit. She did take her time and aim, but all three shots completely missed. She was to end up sharing the loser's crown with Tomodake-san. <laughs> However, she did her little meow and cry in front of the owner, and he turned to mush instantly. <laughs> she was given a pack of gum as a consolation prize. <laughs> her methods were a bit audacious, but she did avoid being the loser rather magnificently. Come to think of it, Rikachan is quite the trickster. I have no idea what Keiichi is talking about. Now then, it's decided that Tomotake-san is dead last. Everyone cheered and applauded. Tomotake-san smiled wryly, slightly bewildered. So Tomotake-san, are you ready? Penalty time! Huh? Oh, I'd completely forgotten about that. You're too naive, Tomotake-san. This is why you've got to avoid losing in our club. Mion pulled a felt tip marker from her pocket. Oh, it's that. <laughs> Show him some mercy, Mion. At least use a washable marker. A permanent one is too harsh. Ah ha ha ha! 
It just has to be permanent. Water based marker would come off in the laundry. Whoa, whoa, what is this? Please take it easy on me. <laughs> All of us pinned his arms behind his back, and Mion approached him with the marker in one hand. And squip, squip, squip. But she didn't write on Tomotaki-san's face. She wrote on the shirt he was wearing. You better have your big break this year, Mion. <laughs> Aw. Rena took up the marker next. Show me your photos next time, okay? Rena. It was a little heartwarming and I just had to laugh. <laughs> this is more like a farewell card than a penalty. Ho ho ho. I'm not so soft as the rest. I'll make sure this is a proper penalty. She shows a big cock and balls on it. Haha, <laughs> dead last, Satsuko. Try harder next time, Rika. Here you go, Keiichi-san. I wish it would let me write something, like type whatever I want. That'd be cool. I couldn't decide what to write, but based on what kind of penalty this was, this is probably the most appropriate. Come back and play again, Keiichi. Tomotake-san was silent the entire time. At first he was quite bewildered, but now he had a different look on his face. <laughs> so I have to wear this all the way back to Tokyo as part of the penalty. Of course, you better wear it all the way home. Uh, you could wear it when you come back. It would be nice. He appeared deeply moved. Embarrassment mixed with a wealth of other emotions made him turn a bright red. Understood. I'll wear this the next time I come here. I promise. Everyone cheered and applauded. It was the finest parting gift possible for a buddy heading out tonight. I saw the woman who was with Tomotake-san standing near the festival grounds. It seemed Tomotake-san had noticed her too and knew it was time to leave. Seems like your guest is waiting. Isn't it about that time? Hmm? Yeah, that's certainly how it seems, uh... Tomisake-san headed off towards her and seemed to apologize for making her wait. We all shouted stuff at him. Each time we did, he looked back and waved his hand. Eventually, he faded into the darkness of the night, out of sight. It's quite the casual farewell. This wasn't the first time any of us had seen someone off. They had done the same things many times before. He's gone. Well, it's about time we take off, too. Rika-chan had to stay behind with the other committee members since they were having a meeting. Sadako was tagging along with her. I headed back home with the usual suspects. The walk back was quite lively, with talk of how, with talk of the day's war stories. Should have done this, should have done that, that kind of stuff. Brendan and I parted ways with Mion, and then it was just the two of us. Then we got to my my house, and I parted ways with Rena as well. It's already pretty late. Are you, are you all right by yourself? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. It's close. I'm gonna run, too. If you run into some weirdo, just yell. If I do shout, will you come save me, maybe? Maybe? If I hear you. Ah, okay. I'll scream loud enough so you can hear me. <laughs> Ship it. Merrily spinning our arms around at high speed, Rena dashed off. She was fine. In that mode, not even an adult could stand against her. Rena's cheerful presence disappeared and it became quiet again. The curse that not a soul mentioned, even under their breath. The more I learned about it tonight, the more unsettling it became. didn't show on any of their faces, but they were probably all quite concerned about it as well. If nothing happens tonight, then it all en ends up just being crazy talk. Nothing will happen. Nothing bad. Nothing at all. What's wrong, Keiichi? Why are you standing in a place like that? Come inside. You'll catch a cold. It was my mom. Did you go, Mom? To the Watanagashi Festival? In the end, your father didn't wake up, so I missed it. 
A little disappointing. Mom stuck her tongue out with a bit of an embarrassed look on her face. That's really foreboding. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, Keiichi's parents are fucked. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, Tomatake's son was fucked too. Oh shit, there's a lot of tips. We've been going on long this episode, man. We've been going on real long this episode. We're like 10, we're 11 minutes over or something like that right now. Crazy. So, oh man, I guess that was the Watanagashi Festival. I'm, I wonder who's going to die. It's pretty obvious someone's going to die. I'm pre and, like, I watched the anime, so, like, I know that somebody will. I just don't remember who. I don't remember who at all. Shit. After they did that nice farewell thing with his shirt, I feel like he's gonna die. Because that was too, that was too genuine and sweet. So it makes me definitely think he'll die. But the housewife didn't go to the festival, and then she died. Right? So what if Keiichi's parents didn't go? What if they all die? I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, next time we're going to read like a bunch of tips and then maybe start the day. <laughs> so I'll see you guys then in any case. Um... Leave a comment to let me know how you liked it. Or to leave any predictions. If you haven't seen this yet, if you have any predictions on who's obviously going to die, uh, leave that in the comments down below. That would be that would be amusing to read. Personally, I think it'll be Tomatake. Obviously. That seems like the most obvious choice. But they did make it a point with his parents right at the end to say that. To leave that, like, unsettled feeling in you. So I don't know. I really don't. Anyway, I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of, the rest of your night. I'll see you guys again in the next one. should be airing on Monday, roughly the same time. And, uh, peace out, my dudes.